There's a massive lithium find in California. And can you tell us what is this and how much is it? So we've actually known for a long time that there was lithium in the brines down there. Uh, those brines have been studied since the 1960s. And the, the rough amount of uh, lithium and other metals like zinc and manganese have been known for quite a, a while. But when the price of lithium started climbing a couple years ago, it got up to over $80,000 a metric ton for lithium carbonate. Then all of a sudden there was more focused attention on those brines. And so the Department of Energy asked uh, Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory and its affiliates to do an assessment of the amount of lithium that's down there. And so I had been retired at that time, but then Lawrence Berkeley Lab called me up and asked me if I would help them work on the project because I had a track record of studying the metals down there. And so we did a, a very detailed assessment based on all the data that the companies were willing to provide to us of how much lithium was in the brine and how much could be extracted over time. And so we compiled all the data we had and, and came up with uh, there being at least 4 million metric tons of lithium carbonate there in the part of the field that they're currently exploited that's been drilled out and they're producing power from. And then we extrapolated that resource to the remaining part of the field that hadn't been completely drilled out yet and came up with a number of 18 million uh, metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. And that made it one, at that time, one of the largest lithium brine deposits in the world. And, and we now know it's among the top lithium brine deposits in the US that are known. So it's pretty substantial. It's, Ultimately, it could produce enough lithium for 4 million electric vehicles per year from the current part of the field that's being exploited. If they expand the field to produce geothermal power from the entire field, then it could produce enough lithium to make 30 million electric vehicles per year. So per year? Per year. So it's pretty substantial. How much is this compared to the rest of the world? The other main deposits in the U.S. that have lithium are comparable in size, ranging from the McDermott Caldera in Nevada, which probably has about twice as much as the Salton Sea, to the Smackover Formation in Arkansas, which probably has somewhere around five or six times what the Salton Sea has. So it's not the biggest deposit in the U.S., but certainly among the top ones. Uh, the other main deposits around the world are in South America. So Chile and Argentina are producing a large fraction of the world's lithium from their solar deposits, which are basically dry salt lakes. And then the Australians produce most of the lithium in the world from their hard rock mines, which are in a particular granitic rock called pegmatite. So both the, the hard rock mines in Australia and the solar mines in South America have a lot of environmental problems associated with them. And the advantage of a lot of the American deposits, including the Salton Sea, is there's fewer environmental impacts associated with pulling the lithium directly out of the brine. Australia, for example, they have to blast the rock out of the ground, then they have to grind it up, and that creates a lot of dust and noise, and then they have to soak it in sulfuric acid and cook it at high temperature to pull the lithium away from the mineral structure. And that all takes a lot of power and electricity driven by fossil fuel consumption and also produces acid effluent that they have to deal with. So Australia has those problems environmentally with their mines. In South America, the solars, they're pumping the brine out of the dry lake beds. It's beneath the surface, and they dump it onto the surface into these evaporation ponds that are the size of a soccer field, and there's literally hundreds of them. And they let the sun do the work. So the sun evaporates the brine in the pond, and they try and concentrate the brine that way, the lithium in the brine that way. But it's not very effective at only produces about 40% of the lithium as a product. And so they end up wasting a lot of brine and lose it in it to evaporation. They're depleting their groundwater when they're pumping the brine out of the ground. And they're also affecting the lagoons nearby, which are foraging and breeding habitats for the flamingos. So they're actually negatively impacting their own tourism economy because lots of people come to see the pink flamingos down there. So both these areas, South America and Australia, have some pretty significant environmental issues associated with the extraction of lithium. And that's not going to be the case in the brines at the Salton Sea and the brines in Arkansas and the Smackover Formation, because those brines are already being brought to the surface uh, in the case of the Salton Sea to make geothermal power. 
and you're just pulling the lithium out at the surface and then putting the brine back in the reservoir. So you're not dumping it out on the surface like they are in South America and creating these wasteful evaporation ponds. You're not blasting rock like they are in Australia and grinding it and soaking it in acid. Uh, so it's a much more benign method of lithium extraction. Can you explain this process? How does it work? Yes, yeah, so the brine sits in the ground at high temperature uh, in, in the rock and you, you drill a hole into it. And because the brine's at high pressure and high temperature, it naturally flows up the well to the surface. And so this is what the brine looks like. It's very saline, it's very iron rich, so it's got this brown color to it. And this brine goes through a process of uh, separation so that as the brine moves through the plumbing at the surface, the steam comes off the brine because it's at high temperature, it's basically boiling the brine. And they use the steam to turn turbines to make electricity. And then they take the residual brine and pump it back into the reservoir because they can't, there's so much agriculture in the Imperial Valley, they can't dump things out on the ground like they do in South America. They have to re-inject it back into the ground. And so this brine is currently being processed at the surface and then very quickly re-injected back in the reservoir. To pull the lithium out, they have to actually pass the brine through a separate step into a container that has an absorbent in it. And that's a material, a clay-like material, that selectively extracts the lithium out of the brine. And it's called direct lithium extraction, or DLE. Uh, and so they have to operate uh, an additional circuit at the surface to extract that lithium as lithium chloride. And so this is the lithium chloride solution that they produce from the brine. And once they produce this lithium chloride solution, then they can convert that in a different process to lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, which are solid materials. And that's what the battery manufacturers use to make the cathode components of the electric vehicle batteries and energy storage batteries. So this lithium chloride is the fundamental product that they're producing out of the brine. You want to show us the rock as well? So this is a piece of the reservoir rock that was recovered by drilling, and it's a metamorphic rock. It used to be a sediment uh, from the Colorado Delta, but it's now been cooked at very high temperatures. That's why it's green, and it's got these fractures in it that are lined with minerals you can see here. And the brine sits in those fractures, uh, and so when they drill in to the ground at this depth, which is about a mile or a mile and a half, so the, a mile and a half yeah, down. The brine comes out of those fractures. So the brine is sitting there. It's as sitting a liquid. there, yeah. It's just, you it's can pull it It's basically stewing in the rock and, until they tap into it and extract it. And how does the geothermal work in this process? Is, is this, they have solar panels up there and then they are storing the energy in the ground? How, how does No, it? it's, they don't use solar energy for geothermal. They're using the steam from the brine to turn a turbine, and the turbine uh, spins a generator, and that generates electricity. And the steam, after it's gone through the turbine, is then cooled and, and condensed back into liquid water. It's called steam condensate. And they combine that steam condensate with the residual brine and put that all back in the reservoir. So it's kind of a closed system in that they're, they're not depleting the reservoir in this process. They're returning the brine back to the subsurface. And how do they get the energy to, to extract this brine out? Is it coming from the, the power that's generated there, or do they have other sources? Of so they, yeah, so the geothermal power. plants make their own electricity, and they use their own electricity uh, generated from geothermal to power everything, and they can probably do that for the lithium extraction as well. So they don't have to use electricity generated from fossil fuels, for example, to process the lithium. They're using renewable energy. To, to process the lithium, and that's another advantage of the geothermal lithium brines is you're not using fossil fuel-based electricity to power it like they are in Australia or in South America.